Okay, guys, I'm going to try to mount these hinges. I think I'm only going to need two. I was thinking three, but I think two is plenty. My son, he's only 100 and, 106 pounds or so, and then, you know, the weight of the uh, the bunk itself. So less than 200 pounds. I'm sure these hinges will support that. They're pretty heavy duty. Two of them ought to be adequate. See, I'm thinking, if you're laying down and you need want to sleep on your side, you need at least... Probably at least two feet. That changes the whole game right there. I need like 24 inches just to be able to comfortably turn around in a thing. This this is just barely gonna work out. I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. Okay, yeah, the reason plan A didn't work out is because with the width of this cushion being 27 inches and having to swing down, when I swung up, it was only going to give me 15 inches of room between the top and the top of the cushion, with this being 4 inches. So that wasn't going to work. That would not be very comfortable for my son to sleep there. So this is... This is plan B. Is to have the bed mounted there. Hmm. And I can take this off and hang it on the back wall back there and just hang it. It's not as easy. It's not easy for my wife to be able to set it up, but you know she's probably not going to be using this thing without me. It'd just be me. Just lift that up, hanging on the back back there, and that will work. My wife and I can lay down there. We can watch TV this way. My son can lay up here, watch TV from here. It's just uh, logistically going to have to move. You know, heavy. Maybe plywood. I should have went five eighths or that or something. But three quarters is the way to go if you're going to make a bed. That would be 19 inches right there. That would probably work. Okay. Now the plan is to scoot this cushion forward four inches, thickness of this cushion, where the cushion drops down lower on the back side. Yeah, for a second there, I didn't think this was going to work out, but. And I got the idea to scoot that cushion forward. I think it's going to work out just fine. It's going to work out just fine. I highly recommend if you're building one of these, screw everything together. Because if you want to go back and make changes or take it apart, everything just pops apart. Time, guys. Bottle jack for the camper. I didn't have a jack for the camper, so this is a necessity. And I went with the uh, 12 ton, 12 ton, because that's what it seems like most most people with uh, RVs are going with it. You know, large RVs. Man, this thing's pretty big, bigger than I thought it would be. It's from uh, Northern Tool, which I actually got it off eBay. I think I paid like 30 bucks for it or something like that. But I think this thing goes 18 inches. Then you can screw the top up. Of course, if you need any more uh, height, you can always add uh, blocks underneath it. Not bad. Insulated. Got this off eBay also. I think I paid like 40 bucks for it or something. Not too bad. 
That's what it looks like from the inside. I have a new bike rack. Well, it's a combination cargo carrier and bike rack. As you know, uh, the other one was a pain because uh, I couldn't see over the bikes because it sat too high. It looks pretty nice. It's aluminum. Should be light. Have to do a full review on this for you guys. It's pretty light though. Man, it wouldn't take much to wreck this thing though. Yeah, I'm not really sure how those straps go on yet. I haven't figured that out, but I just wanted to get a feel for it. It's going to be real rattly, that's for sure. Looks like you could sleeve those things a lot better. It's probably going to work good, though. Definitely need some more straps on it. Here's a real test. Oh yeah, that's way better. No obstruction whatsoever in front. Got plenty of clearance. And with it supporting 500, horse, uh, 500 pounds, um, I should be able to put the scooter on there if I wanted to, which would be nice. Side windows pretty good. 